instrument, please stand. Their Excellencies, the Right Honourable Dame Patsy Reddy, Governor General of New Zealand, and Sir David Gascoigne. Inga mana, inga reo, inga iwi o ngā hoe whā. Tēnei aku mihi mahana ki a koutou. Nau mai, haere mai rā ki te wharikawana. Ki ora tātou katoa. I specifically acknowledge Air Marshal Kevin Short, Chief of Defence, Air Vice Marshal Tony Davies, Vice Chief of Defence, Major General John Boswell, Chief of Army, Rear Admiral Jim Gilmore, Commander of Joint Forces, Police Commissioner Andrew Costa, Akuya Ranui Narimu, and Akomatua Joe Harawera. Tēnā koutou. And I have a very special welcome for today's honour recipients. It's a real pleasure to host this investiture ceremony and bring together 13 honour recipients, along with their family and friends, to recognise the contributions they've made to our country. As Governor-General, I have the authority and the privilege on behalf of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth, the Queen of New Zealand, to hold an investiture for her and to confer royal honours, our nation's highest honours, on individuals who've made exceptional contributions to their communities and our nation. Hosting an event investiture ceremony is one of the most important duties I perform as Governor General because it enables me to recognise and thank them on behalf of all New Zealanders. Some recipients have a national public profile. Others will be well known in their particular communities. But what they have in common is the positive impact they've had on the economic, environmental, social, or cultural well-being of our nation. Catriona McLeod will now read the citations for each recipient and invite them to come forward to receive their insignia. As each recipient comes forward, I invite you to join me in thanking and congratulating them for their service to our country. Your Excellency, to receive the insignia of a Dame Companion of the New Zealand Order of Merit, Dame Aroha Reriti Crofts of Christchurch, for services to Māori and the community. 
Dame Aruha Reriti Crofts has been a member of Maori Women's Welfare League since 1968, serving a term as national and international president from 1990 to 1993, and is a life member of the Ototahi branch. Since 1993, Dame Aruha has been a trustee, director, and chairperson of Maori Women's Development Incorporated. She has been a trustee of Partnership Health Canterbury and the Southern Regional Health Authority Board of Directors. She has been the Runanga representative of Te Runanga o Naitahu, representing Naitua Huriri. She is chairperson of Mata Popori Charitable Trust, culturally advising and guiding developers in the rebuild of Christchurch. She was chairperson of Potama Training Centre Trust and a board member of the Naitahu Development Corporation. She was chairperson of Na Maya Māori Midwives Trust and a member of the management committees for both Rakaia Māori Land Incorporated and Mafera Māori Land Incorporated. She was supervisor of the Fano Toko Ite Ora Parenting Program. She's a member of Teropu Fakaruru Ho Breastfeeding Authority and Teropu Kawa Fakaruru Ho at Ara. She was a member of the Fano Reference Group for the Families Commission, Quest Rapuara Maori Education Trust, Kohangareo National Trust, and Enterprise Waitaha. She was the Kaumatua and cultural advisor for the Queen Mary Hospital Group until its closure. Dame Aroha is currently a trustee of Te Pua Waitanga Māori Health Provider and Kaumatua of Waimakariri District Council. Dame Aroha Rerite Crofts, please come forward. Your Excellency, to receive the insignia of a Companion of the New Zealand Order of Merit, Mr. David Ellis of Narawahia, for services to the thoroughbred industry. David Ellis is Principal of Te Ako Stud and Racing Stables in New Zealand and Singapore. He's purchased and trained horses that have won 35 champion titles. He's been the leading buyer at the New Zealand Bloodstock National Yearling Sale for the past 15 years consecutively. He has been chairman of the Waikato Racing Club since 1983, including five years as chairman. He's been chairman and director of the Waikato District Committee, northern director on the Board of New Zealand Thoroughbred, and a member of the Board of New Zealand Thoroughbred Marketing. He has financially supported numerous local and national clubs, charities and organisations, and is a significant sponsor of the racing industry. Mr. Ellis is patron of Riding for the Disabled Hamilton Group. Mr. David Ellis, please come forward.
Ms. Helen Plume of Porirua for Services to the Environment. Helen Plume is Chair of the Organization for Economic Cooperation, OECD, and International Energy Agency, IEA, Climate Change Experts Group. She's a Principal Analyst, Climate Change, at the Ministry for the Environment, where she's worked for the past 35 years. She frequently participates in United Nations-led expert peer reviews on national emissions reporting. She's made significant contributions to the implementation of key international climate change agreements. She has held numerous voluntary positions within the UN Framework Convention on Climate Change, UNFCCC, and Intergovernmental pa Panel on Climate Change, IPCC. She was chair of the UNF. CCC subsidiary body on scientific and technological advice. In 2007, when Al Gore and the IPCs were jointly awarded the Nobel Peace Prize, Ms. Plume was recognized by name for her contribution. Ms. Helen Plume, please come forward. Ms. Justine Smythe of Auckland for services to governance and women. Justine Smythe is chair of the Breast Cancer Foundation, having joined its board of trustees in 1996. She championed the Pink Caravan Project to take breast care nurses to small towns around New Zealand and technology-led innovations to support patients nationwide. During her involvement with the foundation, New Zealand's breast cancer death rate has decreased by more than 30%, and the foundation has become New Zealand's biggest non-governmental funder of breast cancer research. Ms. Smythe is currently chair of Spark NZ Limited and director of Auckland International Airport Limited. In these roles, she's been instrumental in setting and achieving gender diversity targets for their boards and leadership teams. She has helped numerous women achieve their first commercial board appointment and has mentored aspiring directors and senior leaders. Ms. Justine Smythe, please come forward.
Your Excellency, to receive the insignia of an officer of the New Zealand Order of Merit, Mr. Tony Bon of Ohope, for services to local government and the community. Tony Bon, as mayor, led the Fakatani district through the Māori Wards referendum, building closer relationships between council and iwi, development of youth partnerships, and the Edgecombe flood disaster. He was councillor for the Ohope Ward and the Fakatane District Council, and Zone 2 Chairman with Local Government New Zealand. He was involved with Rotary Fakatane West and co-established Rotary Fakatane Sunrise. He was Chairman and Treasurer of Fakatane Intermediate Board and Deputy Chairman of the Vic David Memorial Trust. He was a member of the Te Mana Whakahaere Council of Te Whare Wananga o Awananuri Rangi. He was director of the Rural Couriers Society and chairman of the Inland Mail Contractors Bay of Plenty Waikato branch. Mr. Bon is a volunteer Coast Guard radio operator and a business mentor in the community. Mr. Tony Bon, please come forward. Mr. Tony Lepper of Alexandra for services to sports administration and local government. Tony Lepper held local government positions for 27 years, most recently as mayor of Central Otago for two terms. He chaired Sports Otago and the Sports Central Steering Committee and helped establish the annual Central Otago Sports Awards. He is chair of Bowls New Zealand. He was treasurer and president of the Clyde Earn Clue Rugby Club Committee. He helped introduce canoe polo to the area and was treasurer of the Whitewater Club and helped establish the Hawea Water Park. He was treasurer of the Central Otago Multisport Club and president of the Central Otago Racing Club. He was a member of the Clyde Recreational and Reserve Committee and helped establish Clyde Bar and Garden Limited. Mr. Lepper is a member of the New Zealand Conservation Authority. Mr. Tony Lepper, please come forward. Your Excellency, to receive the insignia of a member of the New Zealand Order of Merit, Mrs. Lois Chick of Christchurch for services to education. Lois Chick is the co-founder and co-director of the New Zealand Graduate School of Education, NZGSE, one of the country's first private teacher training organizations. She helped develop criteria for effective practice and tools to assess teacher effectiveness. A Te Reo and Kitikanga competencies course has also been introduced at NZGSE. NZGSE has trained more than 1,600 teachers since 1996. More than 97% of students gain employment in the field 
following graduation. Mrs Chick previously taught at schools in New Zealand and the United Kingdom. She chaired the Board of Trustees governing Hallswell Residential School and Westbridge Residence School and conducts performance appraisals for local boards of trustees. Mrs Lois Chick, please come forward. Ms. Liz Hurd of Otaki for Services to Health. Liz Hurd is chair of the Otaki Community Health Trust, which enabled maternity services to be provided in the community and attracted other services, including counseling, parenting programs, and cervical screening. It currently provides health scholarships for tertiary study. She co-founded and convened the Otaki Women's Health Group, she was legal advisor for Healthcare Aotearoa, an umbrella group of primary health organizations in Wellington. She led the establishment of the Otaki Primary Health Organization. She was a lay member and deputy chair of the Medical Council of New Zealand. Ms. Hurd is deputy chair of the Chiropractic Board of New Zealand and a district inspector for mental health services. Ms. Liz Hurd, please come forward. Ms. Sharon Kearney of Akaroa for services to physiotherapy and netball. Sharon Kearney is a physiotherapist for the national youth netball teams and the Silver Ferns before becoming the medical coordinator and touring physiotherapist for the Silver Ferns. She's attended five world championships, two Commonwealth Games and three World Youth Cups with New Zealand netball teams. She is currently the Injury Prevention Manager for Netball New Zealand, developing injury prevention, physiotherapy and management programs to prevent sports injuries. She was a specialist advisor in physiotherapy for the New Zealand Academy of Sport and was lead physiotherapist for High Performance Sport New Zealand. Ms Kearney has been a tutor and clinical educator for the University of Otago's Physiotherapy Clinic. Ms. Sharon Kearney, please come forward.
Dr. Kevin Knight of Christ Church for Services to Education. Dr. Kevin Knight is the co-founder and co-director of the New Zealand Graduate School of Education, NZGSE, one of the country's first private teacher training organizations. He helped develop criteria for effective practice and tools to assess teacher effectiveness. A Te Reo and Tikanga competencies course has been introduced at NZGSE. NZGSE has trained more than 1,600 teachers since 1996. More than 97% of students gain employment in the field following graduation. Dr. Knight runs NZGSE's School Improvement Services arm, supporting school managers and teachers. He has served on the New Zealand Teachers Council and designed a system of professional development for experienced teachers called Eight People. Dr. Kevin Knight, please come forward. Senior Sergeant Brian Smith of Hastings for services to the New Zealand Police and the community. Senior Sergeant Brian Smith has held several positions within the New Zealand Police and is now Officer in Charge of Prevention, Families and Youth. He has headed the Youth Aid and Community Relations team in Hastings and was the officer responsible for the Flaxmere Community Policing Centre. He has been a Hawke's Bay Armed Defenders Squad member for 33 years. He has been a member and chair of the Board of Trustees of Hastings Boys High School and has run programs on Te Aranga Marae. Senior Sergeant Smith coached the Havelock North Rugby Club development team and has represented the police in Rugby Sevens competitions. Senior Sergeant Brian Smith, please come forward. Your Excellency, to receive the Queen's Service Medal, Mr. Roy Reed of Takaka for services to seniors. Mr. Roy Reed is treasurer, treasurer and former president of the Grey Power New Zealand Federation. As president, he led a team to modernize the organization. He is a voluntary member and president of the Grey Power Golden Bay Association. He was a member of the Westland District Council, the Canterbury Education Board, and the inter Ray New Zealand Governance Board. He has chaired the Golden Bay Community Service Vehicle Trust and drives elderly people and those with disabilities to medical appointments. Mr. Reid has chaired the Golden Bay Community Health Group and is Secretary Treasurer of the Takaka Bowling Club. Mr. Roy Reid, please come forward.
Your Excellency, to receive the New Zealand Distinguished Service Decoration, Brigadier Michael Shapland for services to the New Zealand Defence Force. Brigadier Michael Shapland has served in a variety of appointments both in New Zealand and overseas across a 35-year career with the New Zealand Army, notably in South Sudan in 2018. Brigadier Shapland was the force chief of staff to the United Nations Mission in South Sudan, UNMISS, and one of the senior military advisors to the special representative of the Secretary General. As the force chief of staff from May 2018 to May 2019, he was at the center of a multinational military headquarters and played a key role in the planning and conduct of peacekeeping operations for more than 14,000 military personnel from more than 60 countries, one of the world's largest peacekeeping operations. He managed complex and diverse relationships and led a multinational staff through a force and operational redesign to set the mission for the future and to mitigate potential adverse situations. He instigated a number of key initiatives within the UNMISS force to improve operational efficiency of the military component, including implementing a deployed direct-to-theatre system to reduce deployment rotation inefficiencies, enhancing information collection and sharing procedures, and restructuring the military operations branch to improve operational situational awareness and coordination. He championed the United Nations Security Council Resolution 1325 on women, peace and security by supporting greater roles for women in command, staff and force roles. Brigadier Shapland's contributions were recognised by both the Force Commander and Deputy Force Commander of UNMISS as exceeding reasonable expectations and enhancing the reputation of New Zealand and the New Zealand Defence Force internationally. Brigadier Michael Chaplin, please come forward. Your Excellency, the investiture is concluded. Our honours system is our nation's highest public affirmation of outstanding individual achievement. It reinforces values and behaviours that sustain our communities and help our nation thrive and prosper. And these include service, courage, manaakitanga, and the pursuit of knowledge and excellence. By using their talents to make ours a better society, whether by service to their communities or by their leadership in diverse fields of endeavour, or their commitment to excellence in their own area of expertise, our recipients have set a fine example to the recipients. It's been a privilege to hear your stories today. You have demonstrated determination, commitment, and compassion in your daily lives. In your own way, each of you has helped make Aotearoa New Zealand a better place to live. In some cases, your influence and the positive impact of your work has extended beyond our shores. 
Your actions and the stories we've heard reflect the spirit of the words of Tupuya Herangi, Princess Tupuya, when she said, Mahia te mahi, he paenga mō te iwi. When you work, work for the well-being of the people. On behalf of all New Zealanders, I thank you for all you have done for the well-being of our people, our communities and our nation. Whether by dedicating your lives to the public good, achieving distinction in your chosen field, or inspiring others with your leadership, please wear your insignia with pride, knowing that your contributions are recognised and valued, and others are inspired by your example. Thank you, everybody. That nearly brings to a close the formal part of today's ceremony. But before we break for refreshments, may I ask you to stand and join me in singing our national anthem. <laughs> <laughs>